Ano ay keloha yakako. Thank you for joining us today. This will be a bifurcated news conference as we have a couple of items to cover this afternoon. First, we will have Governor Josh Green and Hawaii Department of Transportation Director Ed Sniffen provide an update on the airport operations in Keohole Kona. Facilitated questions and answers will follow promptly after remarks conclude. After a brief intermission, Governor Green will announce his appointment for the vacancy in House District 29. Without further ado, it is my privilege to introduce Governor Josh Green. Hello, everyone. Uh, we thought that it would be appropriate to uh, give everyone an update on the circumstance over in Kona at uh, Elson Onizuka International Airport, Kona Airport. Uh, first, let me say, when you're the governor and your phone bl blows up uh, in the middle of the afternoon or the evening and all of a sudden you're getting uh, calls and texts from old friends and directors and concerned citizens, you know something has happened. Well, that's what happened yesterday. Uh, very specifically, I started getting calls from individuals who were on planes who had heard that there was a problem with the runway and then uh, simultaneously, actually in real time, from my director saying we're on it. We have a problem, however. So uh, we do have a problem. It's already being remedied, if not having been remedied. And that is that we had a defect, uh, a hole uh, in the asphalt on the runway, which obviously has to be cared for instantaneously because safety is everything. So uh, let me say this. When I heard it was Kona Airport, of course, uh, that is close to my heart. I've done personally over a thousand round trips in and out of Kona Airport over the many years that I got to serve as senator and representative from that area. I'm familiar with every inch of that space and it's an older facility. It needs support and uh, as Ed goes over the details, our director uh, Ed Sniffen goes over the details of what they're doing about this, let me say this, our commitment to infrastructure is enormous. Uh, we have inherited over the years some significant prog uh, projects that have to be upgraded, without a doubt. This is one of them. So $120 million is going to go into uh, Kona Airport to make sure that we have really a facility for the future that's totally safe. Uh, $130 million over into Kauai's capacity to bring travelers in. Needless to say, uh, transportation, travel, tourism are central in every way. Uh, the Tourism Authority was right on this uh, with us also. Um, my DBET director contacting me, Mufi Hahnemann, the head of HTA. Everyone was on this because they wanted to know how long is it going to be. And Ed said, I got this. This is going to be fixed by 3 in the morning. And when you are getting text messages at 1 and 115 and 145 and getting those updates, uh, you're grateful as a governor to having an extraordinary uh, director of transportation. So what I'll do now is say, uh, though my phone has stopped blowing up because Ed is on the job so well, know that we are always going to be there in real time to make sure things are safe and get fixed uh, when we have a problem like this. And now I'll call up Ed for the details. Hello, Ed Sniffin, Department of Transportation uh, Director. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I'm happy to be here today and not fired because I was bugging Governor all night with all the texts that we had on updates and everything. And it was pretty exciting. Um, yesterday in the morning, about 8 o'clock, our staff uh, identified a crack on the, in the runway, about 8 inches long, about 2 inches wide at the most. By 11 o'clock, um, they looked at it again um, to make sure that uh, things didn't progress, and it was about the same size. But the same crack by 2.30... Um, had accelerated in degradation tremendously. It turned into a three-foot hole in that area. So at about 2.30 uh, yesterday, our staff issued a notum um, to airlines to say there's this fault in the runway uh, to be careful. We sent out our staff to inspect the area to determine whether or not we keep it open or we close it. Closing a runway, especially a Kona, uh, and a runway like Kona Airport, um, is a tremendous decision. Uh, we understand the impacts they're going to have on travel, on the passengers, on our partner airlines, and our cargo of facilities that come through those areas. But when we started inspecting the area and determined that the, ex the accel accelerated degradation was a concern and the potential for other portions of that runway accelerating and degradation was big as well. We determined it was time to shut it down. So at 4.20 yesterday, we shut down the runway to all operations, both flights both in and out. Uh, we sent our crews out to ensure that we inspect the area, determine the scope of work, because we were determined to fix that 
last night. Now, we got a contractor on board. Our contractors sent up their crews, Grace Pacific, sent up their crews from Oahu uh, through Lihue to Hilo. They drove up from Hilo to Kona uh, to, to make sure they started cutting the pavement in the areas that we had identified. They also sent their crews to pick up their mill that was in Kohala to, to bring it back to the airport. So they went through tremendous lengths to ensure that we got the resources that we needed to make this fix done or get this fix done. Our contractors started working at about 9 p.m. Um, on cutting in the runway areas that we had that identified. Um, and by 11.30, uh, we started milling the area. By 1, we started paving. So by 2.30, we finished up the paving operations, um, we made sure that we looked at other areas, and we found another portion, a 3 by 10 portion that we felt we had to fix in order to, deter, um, to ensure we didn't have any faults in the runway today. So we fixed that area as well. Um, by 3.30, we were done with the work. 4.30, we cleaned up the, the runway to ensure that there was no debris uh, and no danger to airplanes. And before 5 o'clock, we issued the notum to open the airport uh, to all of our, our, our partners again. And throughout the night, we kept um, our partners updated uh, to ensure that they understood where we were on the repairs of the runway. Um, I got I to gotta say, I really appreciate the work of our contractor, Grace Pacific, um, and the work that, and the efforts that they put through, and our staff on the Big Island, um, who were out there all night ensuring that uh, we could fix that runway, get everything moving again today, um, and keep everybody safe as we did it. Um, this comes on the, right on the verge of us pushing out our $120 million construction project. We're going to be reconstructing that whole 11,000 foot runway um, and starting up by August, September of this year. So the timing is unfortunate, uh, but we're happy that we made the decision to fix it rather than, um, than pushing this to potential um, safety issues for, for our airlines. That's what I have for now, and I'm open to any questions. And I can tell you, with this new approach, we're going to have the rail done next week <laughs> for the whole project and the stay. All right. Our first question in facilitated media Q&A comes from Daryl Huff with Hawaii News Now. Um, uh, Governor, Ed, uh, why is it necessary to have to fly in a contractor to fix a pothole? I mean, I would think that at an airport as important as Kona, you would have facilities repair people close at hand. Probably, yeah. So the materials that we use on the runway are a polymer and trained asphalt. Uh, we, have, we need a mill. We need a plant. We need um, resources from the a mill is what we use to cut the asphalt. So if we started, if we went out there with a dozer to try and cut the asphalt, we can't keep it clean. Or we can't keep the cut clean. That mill goes out and cuts out that depth that we need to keep that cut clean to make sure that the, the adhesion of the new asphalt um, bonds to the old. That's what the mill is for. We cannot just cut it ourselves. We've got to make sure we have that, that equipment. We also got to make sure that we have a plant and resources or asphalt that's available. Great Pacific had both. We didn't have another contractor available in that area that had all of those pieces. So they flew their crews in to ensure that they could support us. I guess just to follow up, my, my question is really, uh, why don't we have, as the state of Hawaii, those resources available to you to make sure that this runway doesn't have to be shut down? Well, I think that even if we had a maintenance crew that could do that work, it, we still would have to shut it down. I mean, it still would have been shut down through that busy period. That nighttime that we worked, there was no operations that were, that were running between that midnight time to 3 a.m. So we, did ha we had no impact on anybody. Now, that being said, if we had that crew and those resources, we've got to pay that crew and resources throughout. But if we pay a contractor, we pay them for the services that we need. Mahalo. Our next question comes from Chrissy Tamashiro, K2N2. All right, um, my question is for Ed. Um, you know, after this incident, will this maybe accelerate the Kona, um, you know, repaving project? And I know OGG is up for repaving as well. Um, so, you know, any changes to other projects? For, for Kona, we're, we're pushing forward as quickly as possible. The thing is, we could potentially have the contract set for us to start prior to summer, but if we do that, we're, we'll be in, interrupting that summer peak through that area. So what we're doing instead is repairing these areas to ensure that we have a pavement that will last several years, knowing that um, our construction project, even if it starts in fall, will take a couple of years to get through all of the areas. So we're, after we're done with this repair, we're comfortable that we have a pavement that's going to last us through the construction project. One of the, um, one of the extraordinary circumstances last night was also that the place that the defect occurred was smack dab in the middle of essentially a 13,000 feet um, runway. And you basically need 6,500 feet, I learned, to safely land airplanes. 
we can never take any risks in this space. But had the defect occurred, say, 3,000 uh, feet down the way, we probably wouldn't have had to have any delays. We could have quietly um, just done the project uh, over the course of a few days and just routed people to the other um, length of that runway. Um, as luck would have it, this is what happened. But we're grateful that no one had any um, no danger, and also we're particularly uh, glad that they were able to get out that night. I, I was bracing myself. I'd already received calls from some of our um, congressional delegation about how long a delay might be and how we would explain it to the world. And I, th I was particularly pleased that we were able to tell people we can fix something overnight. Mahalo, Governor. Our next question comes from Dan Nakaso, Honolulu Star Advertiser. Hey, Governor. A uh, question is actually for Ed. A uh, question and a clarification. How many flights were disrupted? How many passengers... Um, between yesterday and this morning? I don't have the number of passengers, but um, from our continent, it's 26 flights. So nine Trans-Pacific and um, 17 um, inter-island flights. Sorry, one more time. Nine Trans-Pacific flights and 17 inter-island flights. And then... Yeah. 160 people, Dan. Uh, 160 people got put up in hotels. Um, and, you know, it, it does sting when that kind of thing happens, uh, but... We've seen a lot of delays in the mainland, and I know people are sensitive about that, but that's why I was grateful that uh, Ed got us squared away before the day. And a clarification, Ed, um, you mentioned later in the day was a 3 by 10 portion was discovered. Is that 3 feet by 10 feet? 3 feet by 10 feet. So 3 feet wide by 10 feet long. Yeah. Ma. That was the one that we did last night as well. So we did a, a 10 by 20. And while we were doing that, our, our staff was inspecting other areas of concern. When they found this area, they determined that was an area of risk, so we fixed it last night as well. There's another area that we're going to repair tonight between midnight to 3 a.m. Um, there's cracking in the area, not as, not as concerning as what we fixed last night, but we determined that, um, to Christy's question, um, in, in order for us to make sure that we're comfortable that this payment is going to last us through the construction period, uh, we're going to repair this area as well so that, that, it, that it doesn't become an issue in the future. Yeah, the, um, uh, Director Sniffin, go ahead, Governor. Yeah, I, you know, I was waiting for the question about why this is happening. You know, one of the things that we're seeing is uh, as we have deluges from time to time, we're seeing some infrastructure fail. You saw... At, We've now at least twice had these large, um, you know, landfalls uh, down onto the poly, right? We've had landslides. And when you get rain in Kona, you don't get a lot of rain. You get like 13 inches a year. But sometimes when it comes, it comes like two or three inches like slamming in, and there's no way for it to drain off. And we in Kona over the years were always waiting for that annual you know, kind of super storm. And when those things happen, we worry about this. Uh, and there's a lot of that on the Big Island in a lot of different areas. But this is our first runway issue. Governor, well, our next question comes from Chad Blair, Civil Beat. I just want to clarify, of those 26 flights that were disrupted, does that mean some of them didn't actually land in Kona, had to go to Hilo or Maui? Is that correct, Ed? That's correct. Yeah. And then, Gov, you said 160 people were put up in hotels. You're referring to those diverted flights. Is that correct? Yeah. I, the breakdown was um, there were 17 inter-island flights. Uh, 13 flights were canceled total. One was diverted. And three. Um, then there were these three other inter-island cancellations. And there were the nine trans-Pacific. So... 26 flights total disrupted, 9 Transpec, 17 inter island, 13 were canceled, is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, and That's then right. you indicated the 160 passengers were put up at hotels. Ed said they landed at nearby airports. Yes. Thank you for the clarification. You Thank you. Our final question comes from KITV. Excuse me. So I know that Le Lihui Airport on Kauai also has some major issues. Is there anything being done to prevent similar incidents like that? Yes, we have, a, we have a construction project on Kauai to upgrade that, that runway. It's about, about $135 million. It's going to move forward this year as well. Yeah, so we have, um, we've got the very big project on Kauai. We have this Kona project, and there's also, if I'm not mistaken, a $10 million Maui project, um, all related to runway improvements. So, you know, a lot of people... When they ask us about what Department of Transportation is doing at the airports, they're interested in kind of the shinier items, um, the terminals, and and uh, beautifying the space, which is really important. But 
um, perhaps even more important is to make sure that we have all of our infrastructure solid as can be. In fact, it is more important because it's safety related. So uh, that's what I've asked the director to take on, and he's charging ahead with large projects. Governor, our final final question comes from Daryl Huff, Hawaii News Now. Is, is it fair, given what you said at the beginning of this press conference, that this runway is at the stage where these kind of problems will be happening more often, that it's actually deteriorated some over the years? To, to get us here. And my second question, just to pile on, is is there any compensation available for people who lost money because of this situation? Yeah, so this, this runway is about 30 years old, so it's time for it, for it to be replaced. Um, and with governor's support, we're pushing a bunch of money into, into these infrastructure adjustments to ensure that we don't have to worry about this, or that our traveling public doesn't have to worry about this for years to come. Um, there is, from, from our perspective, and, when, and governor spoke to this, um, this is a weather event that occurred that, that caused this. When we, when we started cutting out that AC, we found layers of water that infiltrated into the pavement that caused that helped cause that shearing that occurred in that area. And from our perspective, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that the flights were impacted, unfortunate that people's travel were impacted, and, and some people incurred additional costs. Um, but this is not unlike any other weather event that potentially um, blocks out visibility of an airport and doesn't allow an airplane to land. From that perspective, it's very difficult to, to assign blame uh, for this kind of thing. It happens. And just to wrap, um, uh, look, I want to particularly uh, thank Ed and his team. They were on top of this like you can't believe. Uh, a lot of times people say we don't do things quickly in Hawaii, and that may be the case occasionally, but not when it comes to our safety. Uh, not, not two weeks ago, they were able to clear our, you know, the poly super fast, and this time uh, fix our runway. And we're going to be honored to welcome uh, the um, Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, uh, here to the islands next next month, where he will look at a lot of our infrastructure, and we'll be making our case to him uh, through our directors mostly about how the federal government can support Hawaii going forward, because they know that um, we're we're true partners. So that'll be next month, and maybe we'll even get Pete up to do a press conference. Aloha. That's okay. Thank you. I'll be right back. <laughs>